The following program is a paid presentation for American Medicine Today and the Bonatti Spine Institute. The information and opinions expressed are solely those of American Medicine Today and are not the opinions of the station, its affiliates, management, or employees. Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, the world leader in advanced spine surgery, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Brumell, and welcome to American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute. Every week, we inform you about breakthroughs in medicine, educate you about growing concerns medical professionals, politicians, and experts alike have about Obamacare and highlight the work of Dr. Alfred Bonatti and the Bonatti Spine Institute by sharing some of our patients' remarkable recovery stories. In today's show, I'll be joined by my American Medicine Today radio co-host, Ethan Euchre, as we begin a two-part series interviewing Dr. Stuart Hart from the University of South Florida Center for Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation, also known as CAMELS. We'll see some of the incredible training methods that they're teaching nurses and surgeons from around the world and explore some of the medical products and training devices they are designing at this cutting edge facility in the heart of downtown Tampa. Next, we'll hear from a patient who received the exclusive and patented Bonatti Spine Procedures from world-renowned orthopedic surgeon and founder of the Bonatti Spine Institute, Dr. Alfred Bonatti, in our Back to Life segment. Then I'll speak with Dr. Bonatti about the continuing troubles with Obamacare and why innovators in medicine, like himself, will become harder to find the longer the so-called Affordable Health Care Act remains intact. Alongside me is radio program executive producer and co-host of American Medicine Today, Ethan Euchre. Thanks, Kimberly. Every Saturday at noon, we are joined by interesting guests who shed light on the growing concerns many Americans have about their medical care. The patented Bonatti Spine Procedures are leading the way in minimally invasive spine surgery exclusively performed at the Bonatti Spine Institute. And a recent seven and a half year survey shows a patient satisfaction rate of 98.75%. Dr. Bonatti dramatically changed the way conventional spine surgery is performed. And following in Dr. Bonatti quest to find medical experts who are pushing beyond conventional methods of medicine, today we'll speak with Dr. Stuart Hart. He's from the University of South Florida's Center for Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation, and Kimberly and I had the chance to receive a tour of this world-renowned, one-of-a-kind medical training facility. We're here in Tampa with Dr. Stuart Hart, Medical Director of Tampa Bay Center for Research and Innovation Center at Camels in Tampa. So, Dr. Hart, why don't you explain to everyone watching what CAMELS is and what you do. So CAMELS is a world-class medical facility for training, for training all healthcare providers. We are the largest freestanding healthcare education training and simulation center in the country, mm -hmm. and our goal is about training the next, genera next generation of healthcare providers. How can we improve healthcare through training? What I liked is your uh, analogy that CAMELS is sort of the Taj Mahal of learning centers for, for medical students around the country. Um, it's 90,000 square feet, correct? Correct. And what sort of things are you, uh, we have yet to be shown around here, mm -hmm. so um, what sort of things are we going to check out today? So we're going to start with the Surgical Interventional Training Center, which is 39 high-end surgical skill stations, mm -hmm. where we can immerse learners in any type of operating room or procedural room environment. And so we have all the latest technology to train the next generation of healthcare providers. The thing I found interesting was the fact that everything is so hands-on, it really sparks that creativity and innovation. And quite honestly, I personally can't wait to see <laughs> the uh, synthetic cadaver. That's one that impresses me. And that and the 3D printer. The 3D printer oh. you have, and actually I know Kimberly was all excited about this. We're actually going to gown up yes. and sort of uh, have Dr. Hart run us through, I a guess, simulation. a simulation, correct? We're going to have you perform surgery today. I can't Love wait. It. So these two rooms are really one of a kind. So this is our trauma operating room. Okay. And we work with the military to develop this, and we do a lot of training, both trauma type training, do military type training too. But it's a, it, it's a fully functional operating room, so it's a great room to test medical devices because we have so many cameras and microphones embedded throughout. It, it's a great environment to test new devices, new technologies, but also perform team training. Right. And we actually put teams through very stressful operating room situations here, and we test out their skills to be able to become leaders and work together in an operating room environment. Are there any sort of in, uh, innovations that were developed here at CAMELS that you could tell us about? 
We did a, a couple things when we, we developed this room that are very unique to this room. One is you'll see the ambient experience. So the ambient lighting, we actually can change the intensity of the room. We can change the heat, the temperature of the room, make it very hot and uncomfortable. We actually can make it very loud in the room. So it puts the participants, whether it's team training or individual doctors, or it could be uh, military training, in very uncomfortable situations. If you're a physician training to be a battlefield physician, yeah. that you got you know, there's going to be all kinds of noises and explosions and, and crazy things going I'll on around you. you. I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you in a minute. Yeah? Yeah. Can't wait. So here we are, Dr. Hart, simulating battlefield scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the chopper in the background. Um, really sort of tries to recreate the environment that a physician would be on the battlefield, correct? Correct. And even with the imaging off to the side. Yeah. Even with the imaging, it's, it's in the whole environment. Correct. It's the temperature, mm -hmm. it's the ambient experience, it's the color in the room. Right. And it's, it's simulating that either trauma situation, battlefield situation, mm -hmm. or a, a typical operating room procedure and putting the team members here together and evaluating how they interact. Okay. You know, when you have them go through these, what would you say, like mock surgeries, how many of those are done in different environments per group per day? It depends on the level of training. Okay. So we can put participants through multiple levels of training in mm -hmm. each individual room. But it depends on the uh, level of the healthcare provider okay. and what the goal of the exercise training course is. It really makes you kind of respect what, does, what people go through out in the field. You know, as, as a lay person who, mm -hmm. ha, you know, has never been in the medical field, you really kind of think, man, I can't imagine this being an actual scenario out in the desert, under the sun, bullets flying, choppers flying. It's it's got to be incredible. Well, here's the thing: even at a school that would be teaching these medical uh, procedures, as far as seeing, um, and forgive me if it's not the right thing, if you just call it a dummy, so to speak, mm -hmm. if it's lying still, that's one thing, but this particular model actually moves. I don't know if you can make out, but the legs are moving. Mm -hmm. They have it covered right now because it's showing what could be considered um, a little bit graphic, maybe legs blown off, whatnot. Um, but it's interesting to see because certainly if they're in a war mode, right. the person may not be completely out when they come into an operating room. Right, again, you want to simulate the real situation. Exactly. And so by using these type of really advanced models that have a lot of mechanics built into them, you, again, immerse that participant in that particular situation. They forget they're in a training center. They actually feel like they're in the field, they're in the operating room, taking care of this patient. And that's really the environment that we want to create. So, Dr. Hart, where are we now with all these images of, if I'm correct, that's a heart, correct? <laughs> that's correct. Okay. So we're in the hybrid training suite, which combines a fully functional radiology suite with a fully functional operating room. And so this is the future of operating rooms where you bring the radiology suite and, and merge it with the operating room. That way surgeons can do interventional procedures on a patient. The patient may be awake, thus the lights are very okay. soothing and calm. Yes. But if you had to emergently convert to an open procedure, you don't have to stabilize a patient and move a patient to another operating room across the hospital. You can do it all here. You can put the patient to sleep, the teams rotate out, the surgical team comes in, and you can operate on the patient right here. And so it, it decreases the time to perform essentially life-saving surgeries on a patient. And actual surgeries are or are not performed here, being that it's a school, you don't have actual patients coming in. Not real right? patients, but yeah. training procedures. So okay. we have realistic training scenarios where we put entire teams. So mm -hmm. what the, the participants that train here are part of a team, an operating room team, and they come in and they simulate the, the full procedure here, going from an interventional procedure all the way to an open procedure. And what are some of the procedures that are on? Uh, trained in here in this room? Many vascular type procedures, cardiac cath procedures, endovascular type type uh, 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 interventional radiology type procedures. And you were saying that this is a one-of-a-kind room? Yeah, this is a fully functional suite within a training center. So this is really of a one-of-a-kind training, mm -hmm. training uh, suite. Now, I asked you out in the hall, um, with CAMELS, you guys have been open since 2012. Correct. But the innovation behind this took how long? It took uh, approximately six years to actually develop the center, then about a year to build the center. So we've been thinking in Tampa about camels for a long time. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Yeah. And how large is this building? You said 90,000 square 90, feet. 90,000. 
Ooh, I wish I just could get my hands on some of this, and well, you actually said we're going to. Yes, we're going to walk around the <laughs> All whole right. Side. So, uh, Maude is training with us. He is our minimally invasive surgical fellow, and he's going to show you some of our high fidelity simulators that we have. In fact, one of them we actually developed here at Camels, the world's first high fidelity laparoscopic hysterectomy simulator. So, this is a hysterectomy, and so, we can zoom in and out, and we can also move the uterus. So, we're looking at the uterus right now. That's the uterus with the tubes and ovaries. Okay. And so the goal of this procedure is to take the uterus out. Whoa. So you can see the manipulation for the uterus. We can manipulate it in multiple different directions. And we do this quite routinely for surgery. And so okay. you are controlling the direction of the uterus or? Exactly. He is. Okay. Through this interface that was developed for the simulator. Hmm. So you can see. And then we will show you how to perform a hysterectomy, unless one of you would like to be a surgeon. Yeah, really? Ooh. You want to be a surgeon? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, wow. It okay. has full haptic feedback, so okay. you actually feel the tissue the that you're okay. on. Okay, so you can go ahead and place the instruments in. We'll just select okay. the instrument this for you. Oops. So actually move the tool out and okay. then back in. Let's see, okay. let's move this out and then back in. There you go. Okay. Now you can operate. So you can go oh, ahead and sure. feel the tissue. You can feel how lifelike it is. So you can feel the resistance. Okay. And then if you took scissors and cut, you'll see what happens. Are these the scissors or is it the, uh, it's, right, it's this exactly, one? Exactly. Right okay. there. And Whoops. so we can turn them this way. Okay. There you go. And now oh. open your jaws. Okay. And there you go. And cut. Okay. And so you can open and then cut. Now I'm just doing damage because I don't know what I'm doing, but obviously. Yes, you are doing damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do this I would in the not be the room. doctor you would want. <laughs> no. But it's disorienting for someone that doesn't know what they're doing to kind of get their their feel for it. But it um, you can feel a little bit of weight to it. It's the tissue you're feeling. It, right. And some of the feeling of disorientation is because okay. you're operating in three dimensions on a two dimensional screen. Got it. Wow. That's some of the challenges we have as surgeons. That's so this is the laparoscopic hysterectomy simulator. At the Bonatti Spine Institute, all of the procedures are performed here at our 11-acre facility. From your initial consultation and exam to x-rays and MRIs and our on-site imaging center. All surgeries are performed in one of our three surgical operating rooms and recovery is just steps away. This allows the surgeons more access to their patients and allows you to go home the same day. We'll be right back to hear from a Bonatti Spine Procedure recipient in our Back to Life segment. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Yeah, my name is Lee Smeltzer. I'm from uh, Ashland, Ohio. Most people don't want to drive this far, but it, I told them it's well worth the drive to come down here. 1,100 miles from Ohio to come down here and, uh, and get this kind of relief and get treated like a royalty. You know, people, people are treated good down here. Well, I went to another place one time to, for a check on the, to my feet. And they wanted to cut me open about seven inches in the lower back of, on my lower back. And I said, no way, I'm not going to be cut open seven. They want to put metal plates in there and all kinds of stuff. And and really, I have a friend that went through that and he still, not, he still has a lot of problems. So I said, I'm going a different way. I'm going to do the laser surgery. And then uh, I met a man that in Ashland had already been down here. So I went, he said, you better go down and get yourself taken care of. So I went, to, uh, that's why I ended up back down here and down here but not to begin with. And I've been down here several times before. But this particular time I was down here for surgery, I've had a lot of problems with numbness in my feet. That numbness just drove me nuts on the bottom of your feet. Seems like you can't hold, you can't walk real good, your balance is off. And that's what they were looking at this time, down in the lower level of my back, the L3 and 4. Uh, that's what they worked on this time to try to get, alleviate that numbness. And there was a big spot down there where it was pinching. Uh, I had spinal stenosis, so it was pinching some nerves in there and causing me a lot of problems. 
they're going to get a good prognosis. Uh, if they have uh, pinched nerve pain, uh, there are good chances that we can uh, eliminate the pain or make it tolerable so that they can go through normal activities of daily living. People don't come here uh, to be patted on the head or to be given medicine. People come here because they have pain which is truly affecting the quality of their life. Being able to have a positive uh, impact on that pain is uh, uh, very rewarding. And he took that out and I could tell a whole lot of difference even today with the numbness in the bottom of my feet. It's, it's not as much as there. And that particular type of surgery, it takes a little longer for it to, for you to feel the full effect of it. So, but I felt quite a bit just yesterday from the surgery. And then as time goes along, your, my feet hopefully will get to feel better and better. So it, it, they've done just great things down here. I'd recommend them to anybody. And I have already back in Ohio. The patients get up, there's so little recovery time. They are happy, they are pain free. That's the key, and they, they get their lives back. So it's been a great experience and, and, and got rid of a lot of the feet pain too. I'd rather be cut one inch and then be cut seven inches and because you can walk in one day, have the surgery, and get relief and walk right back out same day. You're not in overnight or in the hospital for a long period of time. And so that, that was pretty good too. That's pretty amazing that that kind of stuff can happen. Well, it's uh, amazing to see somebody who is sick and is without hope and has uh, <clears throat> situations where uh, they were already told that nothing can be done and we can correct that. All my pain is gone, gone, gone. Today I am totally pain free, nothing, no after effect. It gave me my life back. I am feeling great. I feel 100% better like a new person. I'm pain free and I have had to take any pain medication. Today I'm completely pain free. I only wish I'd known about it earlier. Right now I am completely without pain. During the procedure, I literally felt the pain melt away. It was fantastic. I feel so, so good. It took care of my headaches instantly. It's incredible. It's really incredible. Today I am pain-free for the first time in over a year, and it is so awesome. It's just wonderful. I feel fantastic. Sitting here in this office right now, pain-free, eager to enjoy the rest of my life. It is just absolutely amazing. Today I feel absolutely fantastic. It's just incredible, the relief I feel right now. So I'm hoping to be climbing hills in a few weeks. When I first met him uh, and he reviewed the, uh, you know, the, the MRI and, and was, while reviewing the MRI was saying, you have a problem here that gives you pain. It should have pain here and it's like well exactly well I've had a lot of people ask me uh, about my back um, and when I explain to them that I'm virtually pain-free uh, I have recommended since my surgery three people to Dr. Benati and my comment to them was it worked for me you need at least a consult get an MRI get a consult Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail.
Dr. Benatti often voices his disdain for Obamacare in our TV program. Some viewers agree with him, and some voice their displeasure with his opinions. But Dr. Benatti is proud to call himself an American citizen and proud that he can voice his opinion in a public forum. He doesn't do this for fame or recognition, but to try and educate viewers about the trouble he's seen with similar types of medical systems in countries he's lived in and witnessed firsthand. Some of his goals in producing American medicine today are to introduce new medical technologies that can change the way we view our medical care and to see the limitless possibilities that exist when those individuals are given the opportunity to thrive. He feels Obamacare will limit the medical teachers like camels we highlighted today, the innovators we showcase, and specialized surgeons like Dr. Benatti that are necessary to keep America the best medical system in the world. So Dr. Benatti, both Ethan and myself, we got to tour camels in Tampa. And what was so amazing about their program was the education process that they had, these realistic uh, type environment to train in. Why do you think that's so important? This type of a, the innovation is incredible, helpful. It is, is helpful not only because allowed to train doctors in surgery, uh, nurses in, in, in healthcare, uh, but the, the, the professional is being changed with a challenge. Every time that you do, it's like it is a computer. Right. So because it's a computer, when you give one step, and if you skip from A to C, the computer is not going to let you do that. Right. So you will, you will be forced to learn the B, even if you don't understand or you don't know it. Right. So the training allowed you to be more perfect and they allow the student to be more active uh, and practically create his own uh, program or, or act independent and then the instructions are being given by the teacher through a little distance. But it's, it's, a, it's a one in one teaching type of a product that will not only create a better knowledge in those students, but they can go from A to Z. Now, with the other type of programs, they can go A to Z, but skip a lot of letters in between. And in your practice, when, when you become now a full uh, bloom physician and you are treating a patient, those letters that you skip are the ones that are going to make you fail. So if you get the students to have the whole alphabet, then they're going to remember that. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to remember that the, those, those, those elements there are what they're making more successful. And speaking of success, they actually have a room where they have actors come in um, with symptoms and even um, doctors. They can be retired or actually practicing and they come in with a quote-unquote ailment and they actually walk them through that customer service uh, doctor-patient um, scenario so that it teaches them and it doesn't bypass you know some of those uh, letters so you really do get that well-rounded education. Yeah. Yeah. Well technology is amazing. Uh, it's just incredible to see today five-year-old uh, kid that grabs the computers and can teach you uh, how to manage that computer. So imagine the physicians from the future that they are being trained with this type of technology. They are going to be far better and they are going to be far more effective in what they do. Do you think that innovation is going to continue on that path? given well, this current administration that we have in charge of the government. If Obama put his hands on this, then God bless us, we, we have no results. Uh, but he already did. Um, he, with the idea to get taxes to pay his mistakes, um, is taxing the innovation of, uh, of new instrumentations or advances in medicine. Well, the major trouble is when that happens, uh, the 
individuals that they are directing these companies are going to switch to in other enterprises. They are going to go to computer or things like that and they are going to bypass medicine so the product of this new innovation, these new physicians that they can create things like camels, they are not going to exist uh, because if there's no money there, these things can happen. And uh, is the product of medicine and why this medicine in the United States is the best is because two things. One is because the innovation of the physicians are being supervised by companies that they want to create this product for their own economical satisfaction. So they support the physician to create this. And the second thing is the fact that the innovations in this country are being practically um, paid by, by private enterprises. And then these donations and these, uh, these uh, opportunities created by the, the, the private uh, um, corporations and citizens are uh, allowed to have the best medicine in the world. If we go with an Obama direction, we will be one of the worst medicines of the world because uh, we'll be a GP medicine. We already see the disaster of the medicine in Europe. Uh, I, I, I know a lot of people talk about uh, statistics uh, on, on healthcare in Europe. Those statistics are being done by governmental uh, statisticians who really is going to put the numbers wherever they want uh, so they can look good and they continue being funded. Uh, in the United States, is the thing is different. You are effective, you produce results, or you die. And with that type of concept, this country is great. Thank you for watching American Medicine today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to contact us at the number below. When you do, please leave your name and number. If you have a Twitter account, you can tweet at Dr. Benatti or hashtag American Medicine Today. We respect your views and opinions and would like to hear from you. Join us next time as we continue to look into the medical products and training simulators that are being developed and are currently training surgeons at the University of South Florida Center for Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation. Thank you for watching American Medicine Today, presented by the Benatti Spine Institute. Please look in your local listings for our next regularly scheduled program. To hear more from Dr. Alfred Benatti and American Medicine Today, tune into News Radio 970 WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. The proceeding program is a paid presentation for American Medicine Today and the Bonatti Spine Institute. The information and opinions expressed are solely those of American Medicine Today and are not the opinions of the station, its affiliates, management, or employees.